A very warm welcome to church this morning. I want to wish everybody Happy Lunar New Year. Could you help me stand on your feet? Help me to turn to your neighbours around you. And since we are in the Chinese New Year festivities, help me to greet them. Gong Si Fa Tai. Bless them with your greetings. You know, Pupu Gao Sen. Amen. Wan Shi Rui. Let's bless one another this morning. Amen. You know, I know what the Lord has for us today. I want to greet you with 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. Amen, amen. We are ready. Let's get ready to praise God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! That's right. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. So come on, church. Let's lift up our song of praise this morning. Clap your hands with me.
In the book of Psalms, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. That's right, give him a big hand. Oh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. Amen, amen. That's right, church. Today, as we come before God's presence, let's declare God's goodness over our lives. Let's remember his promises. Oh, hallelujah.
I just the church you say.
Hallelujah. Church, if there's the crowd of your heart this morning, won't you give the Lord a big hand clap? Give the Lord praise. Let the Lord know that we remember Him. We remember His name, our Deliverer, our Saviour. Hallelujah. You know what? This morning as we're worshipping the Lord, I remember the scripture in Jonah chapter 2, verse 7. While Jonah was in the belly of the fish, he said, When my soul was fainting within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. And this is exactly what we are doing here this morning. Some of us may be in the belly of the fish, in the darkness, in the midst of deep darkness. But here we are in the temple of the Lord and we are telling God, I remember you, O Lord. I remember you, O Lord. And just as the Lord delivered Jonah, the Lord can do a miracle for our lives this morning. Hallelujah. So church, wherever you are, won't you lift your voice? Let's lift our hands and lift our voice for the next minute. Won't you just cry out to the Lord in your prayer, in, your, in the spirit. Won't you raise your voice to the Lord? Like Jonah, let your prayer come into the throne room of the Most High. Oh God, we call on you, we call on you this morning. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, our victory. In your name, we overcome. In your name, we will rise again. You are the light in the midst of darkness. You are our deliverer. You are our savior. We remember you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just pray in the spirit a little bit more. I just sense this morning that the Lord is doing something deep in our hearts. Change is going to come. You will rise from the belly of the fish. You will rise from the belly of the fish. Our eyes are on you, Lord. Our eyes are fixed on you this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, this morning we sense your presence here. We are in the temple, in the presence of the most holy God. And Lord, we know that with you all things are possible. There's nothing that's too hard for you, Lord. And even as we praise and worship you, Lord, you inhabit in the praises of your people. You are here, seated and thrown in our midst. And Lord, we know that you are in control. 
So Lord, this morning we offer our sacrifice of praise. Even in the midst of darkness, in the belly of the fish, we offer our sacrifice of praise and worship. We lift our voice in prayer to you, Lord, knowing that, Lord, surely, surely with you, nothing is too hard for you. All things are possible with you. So we cast our cares on you because you care for us. So Lord, receive our worship, receive our praise this morning. And we commit the rest of the service into your hands. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. City Harvest, won't you give the Lord a big clap of praise? Won't you shout to God with a voice of triumph? Hallelujah. Wow, the Lord is with us. Amen. Welcome to our 10 a.m. service. Before you are seated, won't you turn around to a few people and tell them that the Lord is with you this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, welcome. Now at City Harvest, we love to welcome our new friends and I know that there are many new friends, first time, or maybe you're here for the first time or second time, or maybe during this Chinese New Year, family members invited you here we real you are real, our our honored guests and we really want to welcome you so after the service don't be in a hurry to leave you can proceed to our hall next door at hall 605 we have a vip lounge and there you can enjoy a free complimentary cup of coffee it is our welcome uh, to you our gesture of welcome so please stay around fellowship with us our friendly greeters will be there to connect with you so once again, City Harvest, won't you give all our new friends a big, big, big hand clap. Let's welcome all our friends here in this place. Welcome. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts to collect God's tithes and offering. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Bob. And uh, I want to wish everyone over here a very good Kong Si Fa Tai. Hallelujah, right? Turn to your neighbor and tell them Happy Chinese New Year. Well, right now we want to prepare our hearts to give our best offering and our best tithe to the Lord. And uh, how many of you are so glad that you are back here in church after one week of holidays? Amen, right? It's awesome. So right now, let's give our best offering to Jesus. Now, I'm still in the subject of Jesus feeding the 5,000 people and how the disciples went home with 12 basketfuls of leftover. But if you think about it, how many of you know that God never blessed us with His leftover blessing? The food that they brought back is a result of a little sacrifice that the boy gave to Jesus and out of the little, God turned it into much, into abundance. Therefore, they are not just leftover food. They are actually overflowing food. The disciples went home with overflowing abundance. And church, as you begin to look at this story again, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Very often, our focus is mainly towards the boy, how he sacrificed his lunchbox to Jesus. But I want you to know, there is also another perspective. And that is Jesus was using this occasion to demonstrate his blessing and grace for the disciples, for the Christians, for you and I, who have been tirelessly working for Jesus, serving God, serving the people, day and night, night and day. And exactly what happened over here. Because the Bible says in Matthew 14, verse 15, 16, as evening approached, that means after a long day of serving, after a long day of working hard, after a long day of meeting the needs of people, the evening came and the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, already very late. Stop your ministry already. We are all very hungry. Send the people home because this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Do you see church? The disciples were already feeling very tired. Not only tired, they are feeling very hungry. And not only hungry, they are feeling a bit disgruntled because Jesus took very long to finish the service. And they told Jesus, Jesus, you do not know, uh, monster curry downstairs, close already. Don't, don't, don't keep all close already. We're all very hungry. We need food. 
Stop already. <laughs> and you know what? Their disgruntlement is reflected by their complaint over here to Jesus. But guess what Jesus said to them? No, 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 I'm not finished yet. I love the people too much. Why don't you give them something to eat? At that moment, the disciples were flabbergasted, right? They were completely amazed. <laughs> they didn't know what else to do. But friends, that is the occasion that Jesus wanted to teach the disciples and you and I. Do not stop serving God. Do not stop giving your best to God because all your service, all your sacrifice, all your ministry for Jesus will never be overlooked. All the services you rendered to Him, God will ensure that He will reward you according to His riches in glory. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. And that's exactly what He did. He used the lunchbox and turned it into much. And at the end of the day, look at verse 20. The Bible says, they all ate and were satisfied. But the disciples were the one who picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And they all went home yeah, in abundance. Do you see church? The young boy who gave the lunchbox to Jesus, yes, experienced the blessing. The crowd who got to eat the food, enjoyed the blessing. But only the disciples who worked tirelessly for Him and continued to serve Him went home in overflowing abundance. Overflowing blessing. Come on, give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Only the disciples went home with a 12 basket full. Each one had one basket full to bring home and to become a blessing to their family members as well. City Harvest Church, what you give today, God will ensure for the next 12 months, the blessing of God will be more than enough for you. Who can say amen? Hallelujah. Amen, right? So today, you know, right, after a good Chinese New Year, let's give our best to Jesus, right? Let's continue to be faithful in our tithe and in our offering. So right now, let's prepare our hearts to give our best. And if you are ready to give, there is a QR code that you can use to scan using your bank application. Or you can also use the CAC application and give uh, by clicking on the, the, the give icon, the give button over there. Or if you want to give via cash, right, there is an offering envelope in front of you at your seats. Or if you need one, just lift up your hands. The ushers will help you and serve you. Okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. But more importantly, let's give God with a big, wide smile and full of faith. Hallelujah. And if you are ready, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, God, once again that we can be back here in the house of God to give our best offering to you because it is more blessed to give than to receive. And Father, just like how, Lord, you have demonstrated here in the life of the disciples that those who serve tirelessly, those who have given faithfully, those who have been faithful and continue to trust in you will never be put to shame because they will experience the blessing of God according to your riches in glory. And that's what I pray, Lord, that every single one here in City Harvest will experience that blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, and all the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. God loves a cheerful giver. Ashes, you may pass the offering bucket along the aisles, and uh, you can put the offering envelope inside. Praise God. Hallelujah. God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you so much, City Harvest Church. And uh, right now, we want to hear uh, the announcement. Thank you. Amen. Hi Church, I'm here to give you two announcements. Right, first of all, we are so happy to announce that we are launching our first run of Bible study classes for 2024. I know that there are many, you know, Bible study classes, resources out there these days. But personally for me, I love our own Bible study classes. I remember when I first joined the Bible study class, not only do I learn more about God and His Word, I also hear a lot of stories of how our pastors and the teachers, you know, apply the Word into their own lives and I hear about how their lives are transformed. You know, so I love our own Bible study. So, so if you have never ever joined a Bible study class in City Harvest Church, I really want to encourage you to join. But please note that this time round, some of our modules are going to be on site and others will be online. So when you, apply, when you sign up for it, please make sure that you take note of that. 
So our Bible study will commence on 13th of March and it will take place over six weeks on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. So this uh, registration will end on the 10th of March. So how many of you, you had attended our early morning uh, prayer meeting and our late night prayer meeting? Can you just wave your hands at me? Woo! Right. So I'm sure we all enjoyed it. And so yes, we are going to continue to pray. So please come and join us at our prayer space that's going to happen on the 2nd and the 3rd of March on Saturday 3 to 4 and Sunday 1 to 2 p.m. We are going to continue to pray for the salvation of our family members who are not saved as well as healing for our body, soul, and spirit so we want to continue to believe together with you so that's all the announcement for today right now let's welcome pastor kong back on stage praise the lord as many of you are aware pastor Tan Kim hawk departed from us on 26 september 2023 last year Originally, he was slated to be ordained as a reverend last year, but his deteriorating health prevented the event from occurring. This weekend, we want to commemorate and honour his memory by bestowing upon him a posthumous ordination. Now, Kim Hock is not only a dear friend and colleague, he's truly a man of God. He started his full-time ministry as a zone supervisor in 1999. He was uh, licensed as a pastor in May 2010 by Dr. David Yonggi Cho. His last appointment in our church was the academic dean of the School of Theology and the pastor of missions. We miss him so dearly. You know, every, almost every week, I still think about Kim Hock. Growing up, you know, we are always together. Kim Hock was always a top student in the best schools. He graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Information Systems from the National University of Singapore, a top student all the way. He then earned a Master of Divinity from TTC, Trinity Theological College. And later on, he went to pursue a second master, a, a, a Master of Theology, because he wanted to equip himself at TTC to develop the theological education of our church and Bible school. When he passed on all the way to the very end, he was still trying to complete his MTH despite his failing health. Even while battling cancer, Pastor Kim Hock took every opportunity to preach in church, locally and overseas. Bilingual in English and Chinese, he has preached extensively in countries like China, Taiwan, Japan, Indonesia, Myanmar, Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines. He was actively involved in humanitarian works such as the Aceh Tsunami Disaster Relief and he has served on the board of City Harvest Community Services for 11 years. So Kim Hock really made a big difference in the lives of many poor and needy people in our community. During the most painful and challenging season of his life when he was battling his illness, he constantly encouraged all who met him in person or through his personal reflections on social media. This morning, in recognition of Pastor Kim Hock's many accomplishments and steadfast demonstration of unwavering faith in God, we want to bestow upon him a posthumous ordination as a reverend, honouring his legacy and dedication to our faith community. Kim Hock is no longer with us physically. His legacy, however, continues to inspire and guide us. Can we all rise to our feet? I want you to really invite Pastor Kim Hock's family, Pastor Lily and the four sons to come up to the stage to receive the ordination plaque. Can you just give them a big clap as they come right now? Come, guys. Four sons. Yeah, give them a big hand. Hallelujah.
four amazing boys, Abel, uh, Asher, Aiden, and Ansel. You know, and guys, I, I remember the last time I was with your dad, just the um, last time I was hospitalized. I spent some time, and he said, Pastor, the, the thing that I'm ready to go to heaven, but the one that, the ones that I will miss the most is Lily and the four boys. And I make him a commitment that as spiritual family, we'll always be here for you. Always. Always. We'll, you never need to worry about anything. We are with you 110%. Yeah, let's give them a big hand. This is, I want... City Harvest Church in deep appreciation to Pastor Tan Kim Hock for his unwavering dedication and evident service as a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is thereby recognized as ordained by God. He is hereby authorized by this ordination committee of City Harvest Church as an ordained minister who extended the influence and dominion of the kingdom of God throughout the world given under our hand and sealed posthumously on this 17th day of February 2024, Tan Kim Ho, ordained minister. Congratulations. <laughs> Amen. First of all, thank you, Pastor and Son, for your love and kindness towards our family and of course to the rest of the pastors who journey with us through the difficult time and we also want to thank the church for your love and your support and being there for us thank you so much praise god um, i'm going to ask pastor jx um, can we all just stretch our hands why don't we just Pray for the family right now. Pray for Pastor Lily and for the four boys. So let's just open our mouth. Pray in tongues right now, shall we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you once again for the life and the legacy of Pastor Kim Ho. God, today we honor him. God, we, we miss him as a dear brother, a dear colleague. Lord, once again, oh God, we, we thank you, God, for your goodness in his life. Lord, you say in your word that you will never forget the labor of love, oh God. God, that Pastor Kim Hong has, has done, oh God, all his life serving you, oh God, giving his very best. Lord, today we want to bless the family. We want to pray for Pastor Lily. We want to pray for all the four boys. We pray, oh Lord, for Abel, for Asher, for Aiden and Ansel. Father, we just pray, let that be a special anointing that will come upon them, O oh God, come upon the family. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the one who neither sleeps nor slumber. God, you will hold them and you will keep them close to you, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God. God, we, we know, God, that your, your, your path, God, your future for them is bright, O oh God. Each and every one of them, you have called them to a destiny in you, O oh God. So, Father, we just pray during this time, Lord, you just protect the family. God, bring them closer, even closer to one another, closer to you, O oh Lord. So we thank you, God, that let the love of God come, O oh God, and fill their hearts once again, O oh God. So we thank you once again for the entire Tan family. We thank you, God, in the loving memory of Pastor Kim Ho once again. We lift him up to your hands. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Please, let's give it up for the family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we love you. We, we don't know, Pastor, don't know what to say, except you got to look after your mommy. She's super amazing. Kim Ho, next to Jesus, she lo he loves no one more than Lily. So y'all look after her, okay? Okay, praise the Lord. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Before you are seated, 
why don't you just give somebody a big hug and say thank you for being part of this spiritual family yeah yeah amen thank you so much praise the lord before i get into the word i just want you to know on sunday the third of march our chinese church is having a special big day event all the chinese speaking city harvest churches across asia will be joining our service live at the same time that means they all will be meeting in their own locations to be watching the service and we are going to have one big combined service all across asia there are special song items and testimonies it's going to be super amazing now after the service everyone who who will come members friends relatives newcomers they all be treated to a free lunch at hall 601 so if you have Chinese speaking family members and friends, will you please invite them to join our Chinese church on Sunday, the 3rd of March at 10 a.m. and stay back for the lunch thereafter. I will also be there for lunch to connect with them. So it's a chance for me to get to know your family members and pray for them as well. So will you turn to your neighbors and say, invite your Chinese speaking members. Oh, oh not members, invite your Chinese speaking family. Will you tell them that? Uh, yeah, yeah, Chinese speaking family. Now, some of you are also wondering, is Sun okay after her knee operation? Now, she's doing very well. It will take six months for full recovery. What I forgot to tell you the last few weeks is that at the beginning of the year, she actually went to the US to do a three month course as part of a master's program. Some of you are wondering, how come we don't see Sun anymore? Is she still uh, nursing the knee? Is there any complication? Knee is good, recovering. She's studying with Professor Roger Halser and Pastor Gale at Vanguard University. She has been there for one month and she'll be coming back at the beginning of April. So for the last one month, I've been living in darkness. No, 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 <laughs> not at all, not at all. <laughs> she's doing very well. In fact, she's watching us live on uh, streaming right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's almost uh, seven o'clock in the night. She's, she's watching right now and she's praying for our church. And we'll see you, son, in about eight more weeks. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, why don't we just open our hearts in prayer. Father, we just pray even right now that Holy Spirit, you speak to us. Lord, you're doing amazing things in City Harvest Church. We can sense it in every department, in every ministry. Our church is growing. And Lord, in the missions, more and more people are joining City Harvest Churches. So Lord, we just pray, give us a rhema word today that will take us to the next level. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. Turn to your neighbors and say you can enjoy the word. Uh, yeah. You know, we live in a world of excuses. There's this husband who hasn't been to gym in over a year. One day the wife asked him, why don't you join me at the gym? The man said, honey, no, I need to lose a few kilo first before I go back to the gym. <laughs> sounds, like, uh, sounds like me, right? <laughs> one, one day a, a teacher asked a student, why haven't you submit your homework? The student said, my dog ate it up. <laughs> the teacher said, what? Why on earth do you let your dog eat your homework? Students say, well, my dog really loves to eat cake. The teacher said, how does that even relate? Students say, well, teacher, yesterday you said that the homework is a piece of cake. <laughs> okay, I'm try, I tried, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. When it comes to following Jesus, what are your excuses for not doing it? Uh, that's the main thing. What are your excuses for not obeying God and doing His will? For not giving your life fully to Him and for not making a difference for His kingdom? Well, I'm too busy. I don't have time. It's too early. It's too late. I'm too tired. I'm not good enough. It's too difficult. I don't know how. I'm too old, I'm too young. It's not my fault, nobody helps me. I have tried everything, people just don't understand me. Excuses that we give. Oh, don't be so serious, turn to your neighbor and say, he's not talking about you. He's not talking about you. Yeah. In the Bible, if ever there is anyone who had an excuse, 
for not doing anything. It's this man by the name of Ehud. Ehud was the most unlikely hero. Now, you can read all about him in Judges chapter 3. In fact, why don't we go to Judges chapter 3 and let's read together verse 12. Judges 3 and verse 12, starting now. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. Now, notice the word I put on the screen in bold. Again. Again. So this happened before. This was a recurring problem among the Israelites. Every time God blessed them, they would become complacent and soon forget the Lord and live disobedient lives. Each time that disobedience would open a huge door for foreign enemies to come in to attack and oppress them. This was how Eglon, the king of Moab, could come in. And he didn't just come in alone. Just look at verse 13. Getting the Ammonites and the Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and they took possession of the city of Palms. Now, this was Jericho. Jericho used to be called the city of Palms. Verse 14. The Israelites were subject to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years, 18 long years, oppressed, suffering. I have learned over the years that if I obey God in my work, I will be blessed in my work. If I obey God in my marriage and my relationships, I will be blessed in my marriage and my relationship. If I obey God in my finances, I will be blessed in my finances, because you reap what you sow. <laughs> when the Israelites disobeyed God, he responded by removing his hand of blessing and protection. Now, usually, when we live in disobedience, we blame other people. We blame God, <laughs> just like Adam. God, the woman that you gave me, <laughs> it's everyone's fault and we seldom make the connection. It's really me. You know, there's this guy who went to the doctors. I went to one doctor and said, doctor, doctor, I don't know why. You know, this part is so painful. When I press here, it's painful. When I press my leg, it's painful. When I press this side, it's painful. The doctor checked him, said, sir, you're totally fine. Every part of your body is well. The problem is your finger, it's broken. <laughs> Now, this Eglon was a very wicked king. He put extremely heavy tax burden on the Israelites, such that the people were really suffering. Now, we don't know much about King Eglon, except he was a very fat man. Now, let me tell you, the body is not into body shaming. It is trying to highlight what a tyrant he was. Eglon was severely overweight because of his extreme greed. He loved the life of wealth and luxury. He was extravagant. He was living a life of extreme excesses. He gorged himself with so much food while many Israelites were starving and dying. Let us all read verse 15 together, shall we? Let's all read together. Verse 15, again, the Israelites cry out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Gerard, the Benjamite. The Israelites sent him with tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Again. <laughs> you see that word? Again. God is never a vindictive God. Doesn't matter how many times you fail. If you cry out to Him, you realize He never changes. God is love. He's always merciful. He's slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness. The Israelites needed a deliverer. So God gave them a most unlikely hero. 
Ehud was disabled in his right hand. Maybe he suffered an accident. Maybe he was born crippled or deformed. As a result, he could only use his left hand. Do you know, only 10% of the world's population is left-handed. How many of you, you are left-handed in this service, you are left-handed, could you lift up your left hand right now? Yeah, just look around. Not many, right? Ehud was a left-handed man in a right-handed world. Do you know in ancient times, this was a severe disadvantage. They didn't make instruments or tools for left-handed people. Today, if you play the guitar and you're left-handed, you have left-handed guitars. You have left-handed instruments, but not at that time. Ehud was looked upon as broken, badly flawed, but God chose him and he wanted to use him, just like God wants to use you. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, God wants to use you. Yeah. Under Moab's control, the Israelites had to pay very high taxes. So the Israelites sent Ehud with tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Let's read verse 16 together, right? From the front to the back. Let's all read together, starting now. Now, Ehud had made a double-edged sword about a cubit long, which he strapped to his right thigh under his clothing. Now, a cubit, look, look, look over here, is from the tip of your middle finger to your elbow. That is a cubit, about half a meter. So this sword was a very compact weapon. First of all, it's super sharp. It was double-edged. That means specially designed for cutting and thrusting. Super effective in close combat situations. And because Ehud was left-hander, it was hidden in the right tie beneath his clothing, which nobody would suspect. Everybody would expect a sword to be on the left tie. So one quick glance on his left, ah, don't worry, don't worry. He has no weapon. He's not a threat. You see how brilliant Ehud was? He turned his disability into an advantage. Verse 17, let me read for you. Okay, let, let me read. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was a very fat man. After Ehud had presented the tribute, he sent on their way those who had carried it. Can you see how much the Israelites had to pay King Eglon? It, the, 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 tax, the taxes had to be brought to him in a convoy. Yeah, so he sent them back. Verse 19, but on reaching the stone images near Gilgal, he himself went back to Eglon and said, your majesty, I have a secret message for you. The king said to his attendants, leave us, and they all left. So halfway back to his hometown, Ehud went back to the palace with an urgent word. King, I got a secret message for you. The king, look at this left-hander, deformed on the right side, looking so broken, right? So weak, so ordinary, so flawed. He said to his attendants, guys, y'all can leave. He said to his bodyguards, his security, go, 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 go. And they all left. There was simply no way Ehud could ever be a threat. He was not the hero type. Just think about all the heroes God chose in the Bible. None of them was the hero type. Moses was already 80 years old. Such an elderly old man, how could he be a deliverer? You know, he had no confidence speaking, this old man. <laughs> Think about David, an immoral adulterer who killed his mistress's husband. Such a bad guy. How could he be a hero? Think about Peter. How many times he denied Jesus? Three times. Think about Paul, an ex-Pharisee who persecuted the church. How could God use someone like that? Think about Jesus Christ, just a carpenter's son. <laughs> How could he ever be a savior? 
when I think about Pastor Eileen, when I first met her, she was only 20 years old. Very loud and very brash. And after 30 years, she's louder than ever before. You know, you know what she said to me? When she first came as a 20-year-old girl, Pastor Kong, I'm an alien, but I want to serve Jesus. Can God use an alien like me? <laughs> Look at her today. She's now working on her second master's degree, and she's the most anointed alien in the whole world. The whole world. Come on, give Pastor Eileen a big hand. Used by God to help thousands of poor and needy children all over Asia. She is our Mother Teresa, you know. When God uses unlikely people, He alone gets all the glory. Amen. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message from God for you. So this message is from God. As the king arose from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand, drew the sword from his right thigh, and plunged it into the king's belly. Now, I know, I know, very graphic, right? But there's a powerful picture here. This story is put in the Bible to tell you that no matter how great the challenges are in your life or how oppressive the stronghold is, God has given you the most powerful weapon anyone can ever have, and it is the Word of God. It is your double-edged sword. This book is a double-edged sword in your life. Oh, come on, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Look with me, Hebrews 4 and verse 12, and can we all read together? And the words in bold three times as loud, okay? Verse 12, starting now. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You see that? The Word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. This Bible is the greatest gift God has given to you. When you apply the word to any stronghold that hinders you, that imprisons you in bondage, the word, when it goes in, will weaken it and weaken it and weaken it and weaken it until it loses its hold over your life. You stick it there. It will drain out all the fleshly stronghold. I told you before, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. So I grew up with a lot of hidden anger, angry with my parents, angry with my life, repressed anger, and my temper was legendary. But I have learned that when I apply the Word of God to my angry heart, to my angry memories, to my angry feelings, and in the Bible, there are verse after verse telling me not to be angry. Like Matthew 5, verse 22, Jesus says, do not be angry. 1 Corinthians 13, love is not easily angered. Ephesians 4, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Put aside all your anger and bitterness and rage. James chapter 1, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, Jesus says, learn from me. I'm gentle and humble in heart. So as I studied the Bible, as I understood it and memorized it and recited it and meditated on it, the Word of God penetrated deeper and deeper and deeper into my soul, into the root of all my anger problem and weakened the stronghold. It drained and drained the life out of my flesh until there's no more anger in me. This was how I was set free, to have zero anger. 
I know some of you are very honest. You wrote to me and said, Pastor, I'm angry that you talk about zero anger. <laughs> Will you turn to your neighbors and do this, do this, uh, use, put up your hand, look through the eyes and say zero anger. Zero, tell three people zero anger, zero anger, right? Today I'm no longer irritable. No more passive aggressive, sarcastic, hot tempered. No more. That anger, the life of it is drained out. This is exactly what Ehud did. He really plunged the sword deep into the flesh and held it there. Held it there. <laughs> Look at Judges 3. And verse 22, even the handle sank in after the blade. That's how deep it went. And his bowels discharged. Ehud did not pull the sword out. He kept it there. And the fat closed in over it. So graphic. <laughs> All the lard and the fat <laughs> swallow up the sword. <laughs> when the word goes in, all the unclean things, things got to be purged out of your life. That is how powerful this book is. That's how powerful it is. In my case, all the bitterness, all the rage, all the aggressiveness, all the raising of voices, all the shouting. I used to shout aloud. Everything was discharged from my system. Ehud applied the double-edged sword into the flesh until all his life was drained out. You must do the same for all your fleshly cravings. What could it be? Plunge a sword into your pride. Plunge a sword into your lust. <laughs> You're struggling in pornography. Plunge it there. Plunge into your greed. Plunge into your envy, your gluttony, your sloth all your selfish and immoral cravings. Psalms 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart, in my soul. And then I will not sin against you. <laughs> Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments inside. Where? Deep in your heart, deep in your soul. If you do that, I will manifest and reveal myself to you. How many of you want to see Jesus more and more? Then you got to live out John 14 verse 21. Keep the word in sight and Jesus will show up. Jesus says, if you remain in me, how? Let my words remain in you. He's the living word. This book is the written word. When you keep the word in sight, the living word comes in. Then you ask whatever you desire. It will be done. John 15 verse 7. This is the key to answered prayers. The Bible is the greatest gift in this lifetime for you. And the more you grow in the Word, the bigger you become on your inner, inner man, your inside. The more on fire you are for God. So you don't be too busy for the Word. You don't be too lazy, too tired to read the Word. The Apostle Peter says, this must be your goal. You must keep on growing in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and the spiritual things of God. And the way you grow, through the Word. And the more you eat this Word, the hungrier you become. You know, as Pentecostals, we are naturally strong in the Holy Spirit. But because the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible and the inspiration of the Word, like Ehud, you must become very good and skillful in handling it. It'll be weird to be a Pentecostal and not be good in the Bible. In almost every country, we Pentecostals are busy growing churches, doing missions, saving souls in evangelism. As a result, we have the fastest, or we are the fastest growing segment in the body of Christ. Any country you go in the world today, the largest churches, 99 out of 100, would be a Pentecostal church. Today, there are 650 million of us. And by 2050, there'll be one billion of us. One in every three Christians is a Pentecostal. That is a lot, a lot of people. 
But in the last 30 years, there is a spiritual awakening among Pentecostals for more of God's Word. Here in Asia, there is a theological renaissance among us. We really want to become good at handling the double-edged sword. Now, this is vitally important because the work of the Holy Spirit can only grow to the extent of your breath and your depth in the Word. If you only know the Word this much, the Holy Spirit can only work this much in your life. So is it like this? Or like this? Or like this? He moves to the extent of your knowledge and revelation you have of the Word. So if you're too busy to read and study and grow in the Word, then you're stuck. That's how so many Christians are stuck. For me personally, Pentecostal theology is absolutely beautiful. It is very broad and very deep. Because we Pentecostals have a stronger focus on the Holy Spirit. It helps us to be more robust and complete in our understanding of the Trinity. For example, what a blessing it is to know that the Holy Spirit is not inferior to the Father or to the Son. It's never like God the Father is like this. Jesus Christ the Son is like this. But the Holy Spirit is just like that. No. We have a very balanced view of the Trinity. God the Father is like this. God the Son is like this. God the Holy Spirit is like this. They are all equal, balanced. The Holy Spirit's role is not just to convert you, and that's it. Or once in a while, remind you of Bible verses that you have forgotten, repeating what you should know by reading yourself. It's more than that. It's actively involved in every part of God's plan, from Genesis to Revelation. He's actively involved in Jesus' life. Some people think, oh, Jesus came, and then after He's gone, then the Holy Spirit came. No! The Holy Spirit was right there. He was the cause of His conception. He was there at His birth, to His baptism, to His entire life and ministry, to His death and resurrection and ascension to the outpouring of His love and power on all flesh by the Spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit, everything that happens in the book of Acts can also happen in your life, in your cell group, and in our church. So just like the disciples on the day of Pentecost were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues, so can we. Just like healing, deliverance, and miracles, uh, you can find them in the book of Acts. It should also be our experiences in our family, in our church, and our home, in our lives. So we rejoice when we hear stories like Johan and Eileen, Danny and Cindy, Victor and Mace. You know, stories of couples like Simon and Jesse. All married couples for many years, but couldn't conceive. In Johan's case, it was medically impossible for him to father a child. Medically impossible. But by the power of prayer and by the power of the Spirit, every one of them are blessed with miracle babies. Can we give the Lord a big hand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Oh, how last year? We prayed for our brother with stage four prostate cancer. The cancer already spread to the bones, to the lungs. The oncologists say there's just no cure for him. But the cell group prayed. All the white spots on the lungs disappeared. And the cancer marker went down to zero. There's no more cancer in the prostate, in the liver, in the stomach, in the colon. We are not surprised because our Pentecostal theology allows for divine healing. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on, church, let's give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right, say, you can believe for healing. Now, can we guarantee healing every time we pray? Of course not. Healing is God's prerogative. He's the healer, not you and I. 
our job is simply to obey the command of Jesus. He says in Mark 16, verse 18, you shall lay hands on the sick and you shall have faith for their recovery. This is your job, to pray and believe and leave the healing to Him. Pentecostals believe are filled with a lot of love and compassion. We are not an angry bunch. God is love. This is who He is. And even in eternity past, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit already existed in love. One day, they decided to create the heavens and the earth and the human race. God didn't need to do that because He wasn't lonely. He wasn't needy. The Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, were already fully satisfied in their loving communion. They didn't need anyone or anything else. But one day, they decided to freely open up this circle of love to us. But God sees the end from the beginning. The day He decided to create, He knew that He knew that He knew by creating, humankind will fall. Because giving us free will, will result in sin and darkness on the whole world. There will be great suffering for us and for Him. God knew that He would be hurt by our sins and He will open up Himself to be grieved by evil. So God counted the cost and He went ahead to create because it is still worth it. Yes, all will suffer, but God will join us in our suffering to be our Redeemer to save us, to redeem us. So Revelation 13 verse 8 says, Jesus is the Lamb who was slain even before the creation of the world. That means even before God created anything, the Son of God already volunteered, Father, Holy Spirit, I will be the Savior. God went ahead because He knew that at the end, not only can He save us, all the pain and the suffering that you go through will produce a love relationship that is so pure and glorious. It will transform you into the likeness and the image of His Son. So He went ahead with creation because life is worth creating. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, you are worth so much to God. So as Pentecostals, we are not afraid of suffering or hardships. We know that all things work together for our good to transform us and conform us to the image of Christ. Romans 8, verse 28 and verse 29. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, suffering is absolutely necessary for spiritual maturity. Now, as Pentecostals, we know that from the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured on all flesh. Everybody say, all flesh. flesh. Can you hear you say, all flesh. flesh. The Holy Spirit was poured on all flesh. He has been working in His church right from the very beginning. At first, there's only one Christian church. And then in the year 1054, it split into Roman Catholic Church in the West and Orthodox Church in the East. And then... In 1517, it further split into Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. So now there are three branches, but we are all still Christians. So you must never be prideful to think only we Protestants are Christians. Roman Catholics are not Christians. They are not saved. Or Orthodox Church, well, they are not Christians. That is pride. Can you just imagine how prideful that sounds like? Turn to your neighbors and say, we mustn't be proud. proud. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of love. And He loves His church. So He's at work in all three branches. Now, the birth of the Pentecostal church at Azusa Street in 1906 is not another split but it's a seeking of love and unity by the Holy Spirit to join everybody together. Our spiritual grandfather was John Wesley. Wesley was a Protestant in his love 
for the Bible. He really loved the Bible. But his spirituality was influenced by the Roman Catholics. And his love for the Holy Spirit by the Eastern Orthodox. See, there's so much for you to learn. You say, I never knew this. I've been Christian for 40 years and I never knew it. That is why you cannot stay like this. So much to learn. And because God is love, He desires unity in His spiritual family. And we Pentecostal, we must desire to see Jesus' prayer coming to pass. We want Jesus to answer our prayers, but we must also want to be His prayer answers. Father, Jesus prayed, Father, make us one so that the world may know Thou hast sent the Son, O oh, Father, make us one. That is Jesus' prayer, John 17, 21. If we claim to love Jesus, how can we be so critical? We don't like this group. We don't like that group. We go on social media and criticize this church and that church. How are we answering Jesus' prayer? That is why you must know the Bible better. Even if you have been a Christian for 30, 40, or 50 years, do you know? Next year, I will be a Christian for almost 50 years, and I'm still hungry for the Word. So I signed up to study with Professor Frank Marquia for the next five years. I committed to study with him for the next five years because I want to grow. I don't want to get stuck. I want to grow deeper and clearer and wiser in the Word of God to grow even more in my knowledge of Christ and in His grace. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, Be diligent to present yourself a proof of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Turn to your neighbors and say, you've got to rightly divide the word. For example, faith pleases God. But please, don't become hyper-faith. Don't ever think you'll be immune from suffering. Oh, if I have faith, I will never suffer in life. No, Jesus says, you should rejoice when you're experiencing hardships. But that also doesn't mean you don't maintain your faith confession or believe God for miracles, signs, and wonders in Jesus' name. You see, rightly dividing the word. Have faith, but not hyper-faith. Yes, we are saved by grace, but please, don't be hyper-grace. Oh, I don't need repentance. I don't need obedience. I don't need holiness in my life. I don't need to be intentional in being godly. I don't need to confess my sins anymore. Friends, don't embrace that. It's not true. Jesus says every day, pray, Father, forgive my sins as I forgive others who sin against me. And just because you're living in the new covenant does not mean you reject the Old Testament. If anything, what is the new covenant? The new covenant is the Holy Spirit putting God's law into your mind and writing into your hearts. Hebrews 8 verse 10. Rightly dividing the word. Rightly dividing the word. Yes, we believe in a good God. God is good all the time. Can't hear you. And all the time, God is good. Yes. God wants to bless His children with good things, but we don't embrace the prosperity gospel because money is not the supreme good of the kingdom, because money is not everything. Material success is not the be-all and end-all of why you become a Christian. But that also doesn't mean you don't believe in Jehovah Jireh, God your provider, or you stop tithing, or you stop believing in sowing and reaping. Rightly dividing the word. Amen. These are all spiritual practices, tithing, sowing. They are, they are biblical. Amen. It's not wrong to ask God to prosper us. This morning, Pastor uh, Jeremy quoted 3 John 2, right? Beloved, I desire, I pray above all things that you will prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. It's not wrong to ask God to prosper you. Just don't make, make money and wealth your supreme goal of why you are saved. See, rightly dividing the word. Can you do that? <laughs> For the last 2,000 years, the church have always believed in the second coming of Christ. Even this morning, we are singing, 
one, the, the, the one of the praise songs. I believe you're coming back again. Second coming is found in the Nicene Creed that Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. It's in the Nicene Creed for crying out loud. And now, there are people that say Jesus already come back in AD 70, a long time ago. Oh, guys, you miss it by 2,000 years. He already come back. How crazy is that? So now, since he's come back, and they are evil in the world, so it's up to us, fallen, imperfect people, to perfect the world for Christ and get rid of all the sin and the evil. How can we ever do that? But people who embrace dominion theology believe they can. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, all kinds of extreme, unbalanced teachings are in the social media. Oh, that God is an angry God who is angry with sinners every day, every hour, every minute. <laughs> if you keep on listening to that, you're going to be a very angry person. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's no need for evangelism or altar call because there's no free will because God alone decides who gets saved and who goes to hell. <laughs> or that there's no more signs or wonders or miracles. So why are y'all speaking in tongues? Our cell group should stop speaking in tongues. Craziness. So many Christians are confused and tossed to and fro, to and fro, by every wind of new teaching that comes out. Maybe you should stop watching YouTube just for a while. Maybe just stop for two weeks and read the Bible yourself. It might really help you. So many never grow in the understanding of the word. They get stuck like this. And they're so easily shaken and confused. And then they lose the fire. They lose the power of revival that they once used to have. Guys, you all began in the spirit. You need to stay in the spirit. If anything, grow stronger in the spirit than ever before for the glory of God. Oh, come on, you're on the clap. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbors in your left and right, say, grow in the Spirit. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit can only move to the extent of this, your knowledge of the Word. So as your pastor, who loves you so much, who prays for you practically every single day, you need to listen to me. You must grow deeper in your understanding of the Word because this is your double-edged sword. Pentecostal teachings are very sound and balanced, very beautiful and complete. It has immense love and breath and depth. And God is doing something really amazing among us. If you have not yet understood the program, He's bringing Pentecostal scholars of the highest caliber to come here to Singapore, to our City Harvest Church, to teach us. When God is moving, you must respond. Yeah. Emerge youths, you must ask your cell group leaders for Bible study. Yeah. Church members, you should be joining our church-wide Bible study. Yeah. Those of you who complete the SOT, you need to move on to deeper things. Yeah. SOT is just basic, basic. Sign up for the AA and the BTH classes. It's only once a week for three hours. Earn all the money you want. Play all the computer games you want three hours a week. Of course, there are also reading assignments. <laughs> but those reading will help you grow strong in the Word. Then, those of you who want to go even deeper, we have the Master of Arts in Theology. Master of Arts in Leadership. Sun is doing her Master of Arts in Leadership. So she's studying for three months. We are making it possible for you. You will never find another Bible school with cheaper tuition fees taught by professors of such high caliber and excellence. When our Heavenly Father is opening the way for you and His Son Jesus Christ is calling you and the Holy Spirit is moving and prompting in your heart, you must respond. Ehud was such an unlikely hero, a broken man, flawed, left-handed, 
deformed on the right hand. But when God moved, he responded. God used him to defeat the wicked fleshly king Eglon. There are giants that must fall in our generation. But they won't fall until you will rise up and take your double-edged sword and become skillful in using it for the glory of God. Woo! Come on, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big hand. This morning, it doesn't matter if you are disadvantaged in life. Like Ehud, you can be deformed somewhere. You decide to grow deeper in the Word of God. This Word will be a lamb unto your feet and a light unto your path. How many of you want to grow deeper in the Word of God this year? If you really want to, just lift up both your hands and wave and shout a little bit, yeah. Why don't we all stand up on our feet right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why the presence of God? I tell you, the Holy Spirit is moving. I can sense God is beckoning you. God is calling you. Those of you watching on internet, God is calling you. God is calling you right now. Let's just all talk in tongues for a moment. Hallelujah. God is calling you this morning. God is calling you this morning. Hallelujah.
in tongues just for a moment, shall we? Shuduria la karabahadia. Shuduria la karabahadia la karabahadia la karabahada la karabahada. Shuduria la karabahadia la karabahadia la karabahadia la karabahada. Shuduria la karabahadia la karabahadia. She got a bahode head. She got a bahode head. Shuduria la karabahadia la karabahada. Christians, we always like to say when people praise us for the way we look after our husband or our wife, someone's come to you and said, oh, you're so loving to your wife. You know, normally what we Christian men will say, because she's a gift from God, I need to steward this gift well. When somebody comes to you and say, oh, I'm so blessed just to see how you treat your children. You know what we always say? Our children, they are gifts from God. I got to steward well. I got to maximize my time with them. Friends, beyond your spouse and your kids, just the most, just the greatest gift God has given to us in this lifetime. How are you stewarding it? When was the last time you opened up to read? I mean, not just to read and sleep, but to understand, try to understand. If that's all you have, if you are living today on what you understood 20 years ago when you first joined us in Jurong West, are you still living on the revelation that you received when we were in Hollywood theatre? You get stuck. That's why 50 years as a Christian, I'm still hungry because God moves to the extent I know this. Fellowship is great, but fellowship doesn't, it's not enough. You got to read this for yourself. How many of you want to respond to the Holy Spirit's invitation this morning? How many of you want to grow deeper in the solid need? 2024 this year. Yeah, hallelujah. Let me tell you, maybe some of you need to sign up. Really, I'm not joking. You need to sign up for SOT. You need to sign up for the second year, the AA. Once a week only or to do the Bachelor or Masters of Arts in Theology. But regardless, whether you sign up or not, the Word is for everyone. This morning, one more time, how many of you are serious? This year, you want to grow deeper in your understanding of the Word. Can we just all begin to close our eyes, just pray to God one more time. I'm going to lead you all in a prayer. Just ask the Lord, just say, God, help me to grow. Lord, give me wisdom. Help me to prioritize my time. Help me every day, every week, to put aside time to read. To understand the Word of God. To have Bible studies. God is calling many of you, come to SOT this year. God is calling many of you, sign up for the AA program. God is calling you to sign up for a bachelor's degree. Yeah, you don't have to go full time. You can study at your own pace. It's three hours every week to come and study for our Masters of Arts in Theology. The Holy Spirit is calling you. You must respond. Father God is calling you. You must respond. Jesus is calling you. You must respond this morning. She got up ahead, Allah. Sing it one more time. Your word, irrevocable. Your grace, undeniable. Your love, unconditional. I believe. I believe. Just close your eyes.
eyes and say this prayer. Just repeat this prayer with pastor. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I can sense the Holy Spirit calling me. I can sense the Holy Spirit calling To grow deeper in the Word. To grow deeper in the Word. Use me like Ehud. Use me like Ehud. I'm an unlikely hero. I'm an unlikely hero. But the giants must fall. But the giants must fall. Use me. Use me to grow strong in the word. To grow strong in the word. The double-edged sword. The double-edged sword. Help me to grow deeper. Help me to grow deeper. So that my life is changed. So that my life is changed. I will live a pure life. I will live a pure life. And grow in the things of God. And grow in the things of God. Help me to prioritize my time. Help me to prioritize my time. To grow in the Bible. To grow in the Bible. To read the Bible. To read the Bible. Understand the Bible. Understand the Bible. And live by the Bible. To live by the Bible. Can you just talk in tongues right now? Everybody right now. Shuduria la karabaha deria la karabaha deria la karabaha deria. Shuduria la karabaha deria la karabaha deria la karabaha deria la karabaha deria. Should help us to grow. Lord, we are responding. Lord, as your church, thousands of us, thousands of us here in City Harvest Church, thousands watching on internet, we are responding to the call to grow deeper in your word. Your word hold your neighbor's hands right now the place of agreement is a place of power everybody let's let's just pray over our neighbors right now say with me everyone say together in Jesus name in Jesus name in 2024 in 2024 we will grow stronger we will grow stronger and increase and increase in our understanding in our understanding of the Bible of the Bible help us oh God help us oh God to be a Bible believing church Bible Will you church? pray for our neighbors on your left, on the right? Shut the real la carabaha, 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 your word is true. Your word is spirit. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. God is the bread of life. The word of God is the lamb unto your feet, a light unto your path. How shall a young person keep his life pure? By taking heed according to the word. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, Jesus says, but my word will not pass away. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you desire and it shall be done by my Father for you. As you study the word, many of you are going to be healed. You're going to be healed of your depression. You're going to be healed of your panic anxiety. The 
Word of God will carry the love that will drive out that fear in your life. Feed your life on the Word of God. We love you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for this service. I thank you, Lord. You're doing something truly amazing. People all around the world, they are noticing something is happening in Singapore. Something is happening in City Harvest. The Word of God is shining in this glory out of this place. So Lord, let it be us. Let it be us. Unlikely people like Ehud, crippled and deformed, so imperfect, so flawed, so broken in so many ways. But we decide this year, we're going to learn to be skillful in our double-edged sword. So I pray, O oh God, that we will slay the giants of our generation. We will slay the stronghold in our lives by the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Let's just give the Lord a big hand right now. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody make a joyful noise. Woo! Somebody go, woo! Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Before you go, next week I'll be back. But it won't be so... Next week I'll share something lighter. And, uh, but it's going to be powerful. Will you just give somebody a big hug and say, God is calling you to grow in the Word. We just turned that God bless you. we we'll see you next week.